Hey, how are you guys doing? So now I want to talk to you guys about uh, something known as pH. All right. Now, the pH scale is a device that is used to measure how acidic or how basic a solution is. All right. So you have basically, yeah, it's a numeric scale used for expressing acidity. Now, pH less than seven means that it's acidic. Greater than seven means that it's basic or alkaline. And a pH equal to seven indicates neutral. And on this chart here, you can get an idea of just how acidic or basic certain uh, substances are. Uh, like uh, Windex, uh, ammonia household cleaner is about 11 point something. Uh, whereas vinegar is about 3.7. So ammonia is a base since it's above seven, whereas vinegar being about three is an acid because it's lower than seven. Now, pH itself is measured in two primary ways. One way is, um, is with the use of indicators. Now, an indicator is a substance that exhibits different colors in solutions of different pH. Now, the benefits of um, indicators is that they're cheap, uh, they're very quick to use, and they're very easy to use. All right, they're inexpensive, fast to use, and easy, but they're not the most accurate. They can't give you very precise numbers. An example is a type called thymol blue. Now, this particular substance, when the pH is less than eight, it turns yellow. When it's greater than 10, it's blue. And anywhere in between, it tends to be shades of green. All right. Now, different indicators are useful for different pH ranges. And a combination of them can be used to get a fairly accurate idea of pH. Um, instead of just using one, you would use a combination of them. And then you would get different shades. But again, it gives you a rough estimate of a particular substance's pH. Um, if you use pH paper or indicator paper, uh, it tends to have dried indicator on it. And it, may, uh, it, may, it makes for an easy way of transporting an indicator. Now, another device that is often used is called a pH meter. Now, this is an electronic device that measures pH. Now, most pH meters are kind of tricky to use, and they require um, calibration, and they tend to be very expensive, all right? So they're complicated and expensive, but the upside is they're extremely accurate, and you can get very precise measurements of pH if you use it correctly. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is a common a uh, situation known as a buffered solution, a buffered solution. Now, this is a solution that resists a change in pH when either an acid or a base is added. Now, basically, this is uh, uh, what is known as a weak acid. It is an acid that is in equilibrium. That's the key thing about weak acids. It's an acid in equilibrium, and it tends to have high amounts of both the acid and its anion that it turns into. So, uh, for example, if you have this particular buffered uh, situation, you have a, um, uh, an acid. Um, it's a weak acid. It is an organic acid. Uh, in this case, this is acetic acid like vinegar. And you have a large amount of acetate. Um, and if you have a large enough of both, what happens is because this is an equilibrium, let's say you go and you add acid to it. When you add acid to it, you're adding a product and that would cause it to favor the reactants over here. And since you have a large amount of this, it could shift over towards the reactants and um, basically maintain the same amount of hydronium. So the pH does not decrease. Uh, subsequently, you can, uh, let's say you add a base that takes away this acid. You know, it neutralizes this acid. Well, since you have a large, 
that neutralizes this hydronium. Excuse me. Since you have a large amount of hydronium, you can, uh, um, it's me, um, since you have a large amount of the acid, when hydronium disappears, all right, because it's neutralizing with the base, the, um, the acid will shift over and go in that direction and thereby uh, maintain the same amount of hydronium. So the pH maintains a relative stability, all right? So basically, it uses La Chatelet's principle uh, to relieve any stress to the system, thereby maintaining the same concentrations of hydronium. Now, these are very, very important um, um, and very useful. We have, for example, uh, buffers in our blood system. That way, if you, I don't know, eat a bunch of lemons, it doesn't throw off the acidity inside your blood. Um, the ocean, as we're going to find out, also has a natural buffering system, which is excellent so that a lot of our carbon dioxide that's in our atmosphere uh, is being absorbed by the oceans. However, a buffered solution can be what is known as broken. If you try to shift it too much, you can run out of either the acid or the base, and then it will change in pH drastically. And that would be bad news if it's in our blood and also bad news if it is in our um, um in our blood or, or in our oceans, okay? But we'll talk about that more later.